Greetings, the internet is I, Yokel, back with some more Feed the Beast Revelation. Poor Boo. How are you guys doing? Look at this. Oh, isn't it beautiful? It's so lovely. Last episode, we had all sorts of fun making this huge, monstrous contraption over here. I'm not going to get into it right now. We'll come back and take a look at it here in a little bit. I got some stuff to show you because obviously if you watched the last episode, you see this is super duper cleaned up now. Uh, but first, there's something I have got to do, guys. I have absolutely got to do this. It has been driving me nuts. I have meant to do this for, oh man, I don't know, so many episodes and I get all caught up in what I'm doing and I forget about it. So we're going to do it today. We're going to do it right now, right off the bat. We are going to look at every single one of these books. We're going to read all of them front to... No, I'm just kidding. We're not going to do that. I'm tired of carrying all these books. And there is this really, really awesome, awesome item you can make that helps with that. Let's see. Where are you? The Akashic Tome. There we go. What do we need? We need a book and a bookshelf. Okay. Let's see. Well, do I have a book? No. I was hoping I had books. Okay. Uh, Okay, and last but not least, Akashic Tome. Now, what is the Akashic Tome, you're asking? Well, that's a good question. I opened it up, and it's empty. But if I craft it, let's say my XNet manual. And, oh, look, there's my XNet manual. Ta-da! And let's see, if I want it back, what do I do? I shift-click. Oh, I probably should have read, huh? <laughs> um, oh, there we just uh, left click. There we go. Okay, I use it. I use it to turn it back into it. So now I should be able to put all of my books in here, I believe. It would be really nice. Yeah, look at that uh, here. So you can see it better. There we go. See, it shows me all the books I have in there. Isn't that lovely? Oh, man. Definitely make one of these. I've got those manuals all taken care of now. Really, really nice to have that tome. Let's take a real quick look at the contraption we made last episode. And I want to show you one thing that I did here. So if you remember, I talked a little bit about if this ran out of starlight. I think I did at least. If the chalice, starlight chalice here were to run out of starlight, uh, it could break this whole setup. So what I did is using the XNet controller, I added a logic channel. And what I said is I said if the starlight chalice is at least half full. See, it says greater than 12,000. That's millibuckets. The chalice holds 24,000 millibuckets. So if it's, it's at least half full, then operate on the white channel or the uh, white output channel. It's, it's not really a channel. These are channels up here, it's, but it's kind of like a channel, but it's a little confusing because it's the same word. But anyway, what that means though is anything in this control panel that is set to operate on the white channel will do so, so long as this chalice is half full. So that's what I did, the activators here that feed the infuser, the ones that put the uh, slime balls and the aquamarines on there. I told them, so long as this thing is half full, you guys can have fun and do your business. As soon as this thing falls below half full though, they turn off. And then once it fills back up, it, it keeps going. And the reason I did that, um, the reason I chose half full is because I can't really turn off this interaction between these two things here. So I wanted to make sure there was plenty of starlight to buffer, uh, especially during the daytime when these wells are a lot less productive. So anyway, that is uh, the big improvement that I made to the overall mechanics of the machine. Obviously, I did a ton for the aesthetics. <laughs> looks way better now. I got all this stuff ta uh, stashed away in the cave. And I've got the uh, lava being uh, collected now too, which is really nice. And right now I have it back in here making some stone for me through an igneous extruder. Oh, I'll just take that while I'm here. <clears throat> and uh, I also, um, the sink, by the way, if, in case you're wondering, is just kind of buried back in that hill right there. It's it's tied into that silo. Another thing that I did, and this is really cool. So this uses a little bit of some advanced functionality of XNet. I connected this XNet network over here with that one over there. I tied them together. Now you can't actually have two controllers on the same network, but by using this router and these, oops, and these routing connectors and network cables, you can 
connect two networks together and they can uh, utilize each other's uh, things on each other's network so long as there is a name to the channel that you're trying to access. And I'll see if I can explain here a little bit better. So over here on this network, we have power. And uh, let's see, where is it? Yeah, there it is. We have the uh, the power cell and it's uh, it's it's gaining power from somewhere else. It doesn't really matter. But this is a really convenient way to power this network because we don't have to have it attached to the generator. It's uh, That's elsewhere. So anyway, so this network is, has power attached to it. So what I did is I named that power channel main energy. Uh, I just shorthand, not trying to be clever or anything. I named that main energy. And then over here somewhere, uh, right here, I think. Yeah, there we go. I have a router attached to this network. Obviously, there's uh, there's uh, the XNet cables down there, and here's the uh, you can't see them because they're hidden by a facade, but there's connectors right there and, and all that. But, uh, anyway, so this uh, this router right here is connected to this network over here, and if we look at it, we can see local channels. There's one called Main Energy, which is the channel I just showed you. I named it power uh basically um how do i explain this so whatever if you put a name in in this slot over here it'll expose this channel to the network under that name power so i go over here to this network and i have over here i have a, a power channel and i have named it silo energy and but you notice there's no power source connected to this network and down here in the router, I have silo energy on the left-hand side there. And you can see I've exposed it to the network with the name power. Now, as far as these two routers are concerned, that power channel is the same channel, regardless of what network it's on. So now that means this channel right here can access anything on the main energy channel, including the power, which is being fed into the controller right here. Uh, I've also done that with an item channel so that I can, you probably heard it, so that I can automatically pump resonating gems over here into these light wells from our stash over here in the cave. So really, really cool functionality. And now that I've showed that to you guys, I'm going to close this hole up. You ever work really hard on something and you're just kind of struggling with the, the design aspects of it? You're like, well, you know, I think I think this is good. I think this is this looks fine. And you you, you quit for the for the day or the night or whatever it is, you know, and you come back a day or maybe even two days later. And you look at it and you're just like, my God, what was I thinking? <laughs> I had absolutely no idea. Obviously, no clear concept on what I was working on. I was just slap dashing blocks together. So. This is the result of that, and now I'm going to see if I can't make some lemonade out of this big old fat lemon, big old fat brown lemon I laid here on my, right next to my base. Oh, oh yeah, I like that. That's looking good. Okay, now we can come across here and across here. We'll do like uh, this. Yeah. Yeah, that's not too bad. Uh, I can do like, like that all the way across, kind of like that. Little low windows there, that's cool. There, and it's got a roof, hey! Well, it's got a ceiling. We're going to move on with the next thing that I want to do, and that is starting to play around with minerales. Oh, and picking up, picking up these guys. Woo! Rolling in them. Rolling in them. I've made a few things already. I've already got the minerales celestial collector crystal plus the marble blocks we're going to need to uh, make that. Uh, oh no, I don't. That's that's not all the marble blocks I'm gonna need. I can I can quite clearly see that from here. So I'll I'll have to get the rest of the marble blocks that we're gonna need. But I'm also gonna need like a ton of other things. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna make some stuff. I'm gonna make some stuff. Yeah. Get up here and take a survey. What we got to what we got to work with here. So 
Uh, over there is going to be where the ores are processed. Somewhere in this general area over here. The uh, stone is being made over there right now. I do kind of like that as Agland, but that would be a convenient place. Put some stuff. Um, the Mineralis Ritual, I can stick out there. So maybe that's, the, maybe that's what I should do first. Let's work on the Mineralis Ritual. Still haven't fixed Terra Terra Bozu. I'm gonna have to work on that. He gets lucky every once in a while. Yay. He gets lucky every once in a while and catches one, but nothing even close to consistent. <laughs> Go help him out here. Did you throw one out? Yep, there it is. Cheer up, buddy. Hey, if you notice that it was not near as loud over here today as it was last episode, it's because I buried a sound muffler. Yeah, <laughs> that's worked out really well. It's made it a lot more tolerable to be over here. Hooray! Once again, the builder saves the day. Well, not really. I probably could have built that faster by hand. <laughs> but whatever. But now we have our ritual pedestal up here just ready for a mineralis celestial crystal, which we will need to make. And I haven't looked at the sky lately, but I'm guessing it's getting close to nighttime. And hopefully mineralis will be out. I'm going to use... I think I'm going I'm to use the high-powered one, guys. I am. I'm going to use a 900 or 900 or there or, or oh, you know what else we need to make? We need to make the ritual anchors too. So I need to make the ritual anchors. So let me do that too. We got over here on this side. I haven't really used any of the space this direction. Maybe, maybe that's a way to go. You know, there's a lot of flat area over here that would be nice ag land, I bet. Let's let's do it over here. I'm going to do what I want to do over here. So, I'm going to take down all of these all this hemp. I was growing this just so I could make the the last flap, the last sail for my my windmill up there. All right, so we're making stone. We can bring it right out here. Yeah. Uh, maybe take this down. You know what? I bet we can make an infused shovel real quick. Yeah, boom, boom, infused. That's going to help out with a little bit of this terraforming over here. <laughs> ah. Let's see, how much did it just take out? Oh, geez. <laughs> wow, that's not exactly what I was expecting. <laughs> uh, that's a little intense. Also, that was a lot of dirt. Look how thick that dirt layer is. Wow. Hmm. Okay, so it went down quite a bit. That is uh, probably not what I want. I nope that didn't help. <laughs> well, maybe if I shift click it'll only do like one or one layer, but no, that's hmm. Well, I don't know about the infused shovel. That it might be too much now. <laughs> Switch shovel so I can get out of here. Um uh, hmm. Okay, let's think about this. Old Doug here is not gonna let me down. I can...
30 this way. That is... That is acceptable. All right. Yay. Hey, look at that. There's Mineralis. Hot dog. Things are looking up. <clears throat> Woo. Avatas. Avatas that right there. <laughs> you guys, you can't... I've told you, you can't tune yourself. Avatas. Super loud. Cool. All right, now what we want to do is we want to take our Mineralis one. Yep, there you are. Mineralis, okay. Get out over here on this ritual pedestal, and boom, there we go. One, two, three, four. Our anchor here, yeah. Okay, and so the middle of it is all kind of right. Now, one, two, three. Oh, one, two, three. Uh, maybe one more to grow on. Let's try this and see if this works. I need to get my linking tool. There it is. And let's go back out yonder. We are going to select that one. And go out here. And click on this one. And voila, there we go. Ritual. Ritual. Uh, we can actually check this. Expose some stones there. Probably see a little something going on here for too long, hopefully. All right, well, this, you know, actually, hmm, now that I think about it, I didn't actually test vertical <laughs> with this thing. Let me grab some stone. I hope I have. Oh, yeah, I have some. Um, This won't work, right? It needs to be three away. I bet it needs to be three away out there. I bet I'm breaking the ritual. Check it out. Oh, no, 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 I'm wrong. I am incorrect. It's just uh, it's taking its sweet time getting there. So I think what that means is I think that means I want to point my uh, my Mineralis Attuned Celestial Collector Crystal at that ritual. I think that's what that means, and that'll speed this up. This should have all filled in by now, I think. We will build it on the flip side of this, I think. Ooh, that was smooth. Did you guys see that? Latex? What? <laughs> Wait a minute. That's not the right thing. <laughs> like, this doesn't look right. There's <laughs> something wrong with this starlight. <laughs> I needed make plastic for the item splitter and the fluid crafters. I had needed latex. That's really funny. I I guess I forgot. <laughs> That's really great. Oh, look at that. I could... Oh, I didn't know I could do that. <laughs> I just filled this entire portable tank. 
by right clicking on the uh, the silo up there. So that's that's cool. I didn't know that would work. I like that. Oh uh, yeah, that works a lot better with starlight. Voila! There we go. Okay, now that we have that set up right here, remember that is tuned to Mineralis. If we link this to our Mineralis ritual, it should go into overdrive. Yeah, okay, now we're going to need to make some lenses. That's kind of what I figured. All right, let's take those. This is totally worth using a, uh, a big crystal, I believe. I think the bigger, the purer, the more lenses you get from one recipe. So let's go ahead and try to max that out. All right, is that it? That's it. All right, how many did we get? We got 11. 11 maxed out lenses. Cool, that's great. <clears throat> Ooh, it's looking pretty over here. Looking pretty. Okay, so what's going on here is our crystal just can't contain all the power that's in it. So we've got to direct some of it back in here with these lenses. And that's what these are for. Here we go. Let's see. All right, so now I just need to take my... Oh, this is... I, got, I don't have enough stuff. I need more hands as well. Put this over here for right now. Uh, we're going to top that down because we don't need that now. Yep. And we're going to link this back to it. Yeah, there we go. And then it's probably going to want another one. Yep, what's another one? Ready. Any more? Now, I don't think I had that happen with this ritual over here, because I did. I mean, that's an Armara uh, collector crystal. I did have it pointed at it initially, and... It didn't actually refract any of these beams, if I remember correctly. Now, maybe that just has to do with the the fact that it, uh, you know, the kind of uh, ritual it is, or, or maybe I wasn't paying attention. Oh, look at that. I think we got it. We got it. Is that it? Looks like that's it. Nice. Pretty. Look how pretty that is. Isn't that pretty? Super pretty. Okay, cool. Oh, yeah, I got lightning flash and everything. That's very, 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 very fancy. All right, let's go take a look at what's going on over here then. Wow, ba boom. Awesome. Look at all this good stuff here. Yeah. Oh, did I lose my infusion? Oh, man. So the infusions can run out of your tools every once in a while. This is the second time now that my crystal sword has lost its infusion, and it's not really a huge deal. Uh, it's still a pretty powerful sword without the without the infusion. It just loses that big, you know, whack, that big area of effect. But yeah, there we go. Uh, this is kind of the, the gist of it. This is going to be... Gonna be a lot of stone out here. I, I don't know. We'll, I'll probably start off with just a few strips. Actually, I'll probably do like three strips of stone. I think I can scale my machine pretty easily that way, and uh, and then we'll we'll build from there if we decide that that's not fast enough. But this will be pretty cool, I think. Uh, yeah. Hey, so thanks a lot, guys. I appreciate you stopping by. I hope you learned a little bit of something. If you have any questions about what you've seen here, please leave a comment down below. I know I've probably glazed over some of this stuff. So there's probably a few things that you guys see that I didn't mention or that maybe you want to know a little bit more about, and uh, I'll be happy to tell you. So uh, until the next one, thanks for stopping by. I am Levita Yoko. This is Feed the Beast Revelation, and you are awesome. Thanks for stopping by. Bye-bye.